Okay, recording started. Um, we're going to go through each group and present our eight balls. So let's have, uh, who'd like to volunteer for their group? Uh, we'll go first. Awesome. Thank you, Anthony. So let me share my screen. Here is uh, kind of our final product. So when you click the center button, it gives you one of the options in the array. We did it pretty simple. We just uh, made a container, which is this glass background. And inside of that container had our gray inner circle. And in that inner circle container had our button. Nicely so done. Just kind of did some fancy little CSS over here to manipulate it. And on the no. JavaScript portion, we um, just created a function called tell fortune. Yes. And in that, we put element. And then below that, we had our array. And we kept what we had from this morning. So mm -hmm. our variable answers is life answers, math four, math random times life answers dot length. And then under that, to manipulate the fortune or button over here we had an on click event mm -hmm. with the function of tell fortune in it and in there we had the element dot inner text equals our variable of answers nicely done so now now that you've completed this you feel like you can create a slot machine <laughs> um i can try maybe i can <laughs> open a casino right there we go yeah we just need a bunch of money we can start uh charging people to play Get that random answer. Easy yeah. peasy. There we go. <laughs> See, now when you go to Vegas, you're going to be like, I can make this. Why am I playing? This? <laughs> All right. So uh, there we go. Thank you, um, Anthony's group. Let's have another view of uh, Slot Machine. Who'd like to present next? All right. I'm just going to bang my head on the keyboard. Whatever number comes up, I'm just going to choose that group number, okay? Here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Let's just go with Eric's group. <laughs> Thought I was going to bang my head, didn't you? <laughs> nice. This is awesome. Use math.ram to get the next group. That well, I could do that, but being on he keyboard always is reliable. All right, uh, nicely done. I really like the CSS. So can you guys explain the what you did? And you got you even got a triangle there as well. Oh, uh, you, you guys, this shiny ball. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I, I'll shut up. Go ahead. I we didn't we couldn't figure out how to get the inner text to say the um the words oh so you guys worked on the excellent ball <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't okay yeah it's that thing that you said it's like don't spend too much time on that and like well you guys deliberately did what i told you not to but you guys got the best ball i've ever seen so you guys are going to stay after and get the functionality to work okay i'm going to make okay. sure you guys finish this because that's the point of this project but now everyone this is how you get the best looking eight ball in the world. How'd you get the how'd you get it to work? How'd you get this shine on the ball? Show us at least the CSS. Oh no, that's the image. We just made the triangle. That's all. Yeah. Oh, it's an image. Okay. Mm -hmm. There we go. You fooled me. Clever. Um well, fantastic. You you got the eight ball template. Now you got the functionality working. You'll see the other groups present. And you'll get the solution through seeing that. But I want you guys to work it out and stay till you get that eight ball working, okay? Okay. Okay, so now that we've had this group, let's move on. And uh, Daisy's group. You want to share your screen, Richard, and I can, we can talk through it together. So we got the the console to work, but we were struggling and are struggling to connect it to our uh, HTML. Okay. It pops up on our ball. So if we, oh wait.
we have the random number going to console, but um, like the previous group, we we were gonna uh, have it show up in this white circle on the top left that I hadn't moved down and centered yet. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, we were still working on it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what are we missing? How far away are we from getting our our solution? Because it only looks like a bite out of the cookie on the top left, right? So what's yeah. So what's well, going on? sorry. All right. So I'll have you guys stay and work on this too. But now just tell me while you're presenting, what's the first step? What's the next step you guys need to do? Yeah. Um, yeah. We we are trying to figure well, we're trying to figure out how to get it returned to the div. Um we spent like 20 minutes working on that, and then we hit like the get help button in Zoom. And then like 30 seconds later, it was like, hey, you're returning to the main room. <laughs> okay. It was like really bad timing there. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. you guys will see some more presentations. So keep working. You, uh, that That is the point of this one here, not just to get a black circle, but to make the text appear and change. Yeah. All right. So we're really close. I mean, did, does the functionality to get a new answer still working from this morning? Did you still have that working? Um. Probably, I mean, math dot floor. You don't have math dot random anywhere. I don't see. Oh, there it is. Roll equals random. Okay, then you roll times eight balls. Okay, there it is. All right, so there it is. Okay, and so we want to access how. At least tell me one of the two ways that you can access uh, the element on the HTML uh, through the JavaScript. So we have, I have the, um, what was it? Query. Yeah. The query selector. Okay. Stuff pulled up on my other screen. Okay. So that's one way. Then let's go with that. Use the document query selector to yeah. select that div. And in order to use a document query selector, what do you need to do to that div? I hadn't gone that far. We need to give it an ID because the query selector is going to search your element search all the elements on the DOM by the ID name. So we need to give that div an ID and then use DOM document query selector to select that ID. Okay, so I'll check in on you guys to make sure you guys are uh, complete with that. All right, but great job uh, so far. You're, you're on your way. Cool, appreciate it. Okay, Thank you, Thank you guys and Viviana's group. Sorry, I was unmuted. Okay, so okay. there's a very simple um, <laughs> eight ball. I'm pulling up the code. Oh. oh sorry, guys. Okay, so this is our circle, and when we click on it, it gives us a random answer. Changes. We kept it very simple. We just put click me inside of a blue square. And then we took the mornings function that we created and we used the this. Um, we used this to connect the script to the HTML. Mm -hmm. And then once you connected it, how did you change it? Um, we used element inner text to change click me to the answer that we would get from the function. All right. Nicely done. That's the way to do it. So for you guys that have not completed it yet, uh, this is the way to do it using the this keyword. Okay. This is the way to use it with using the this keyword. And I think that's, that's it as far as presentations. We only had uh, about four groups. Did anyone not present yet? Christian, did your group present? Christian. Oh, I was with Eric. Okay, you're there. Okay. All right. Well, then that's it, guys. Let's continue work on the, uh, let's, <laughs> let's continue. I can't speak. Let's continue to work on this now, uh, if you haven't finished. And uh, I'll open up the breakout rooms.
All right, let me share my screen for what we have as far as assignments and uh, what we're doing for the rest of the week so we can get uh, oriented with our schedule, our game plan. So let me share here my screen. There we are. Got it. All right, so we've connected our HTML to our JavaScript now. And sorry, this is the right day. Here, I'm gonna add the lecture. I'm gonna add the recording here, our presentations as well. Tomorrow, I'm going to take everything that we've learned up to this point. We're gonna to continue re to review the DOM and add uh, DOM manipulation to tomorrow's uh, belt review. So we're going to create uh, an exam. We're going to do a practice exam. I'm going to share it with you guys tomorrow. And you can use it uh, after I've done the review to test yourself. But make sure you've done your core assignments first. So only do the belt review test that I would be sharing with you guys after you've done all the core assignments. Okay. So don't put the a cart before the horse as the saying goes, all right? Don't do the belt review before you finish the core assignments because you won't even be able to take your exam unless you have all the seven core assignments completed, right? So uh, we want to work on button clicker and uh, we also want to work on likes. So let's look at, let's look at likes, all right? I put it on tomorrow, but really uh, it's it's for today. So let's look at likes. Every time you click the like button, we should be able to now increase the number here by the number of likes that we've increased by. So we can have a variable stored, storing that number. And every time we uh, click increase that number and assign that value here so that we see that change, okay? So that's step one. So first you create this, get this to work. Step two is to create this, right? Then you have three separate like buttons with uh, for three different uh, names, Neil, Nicole, and Jim, right? If you click this like button, it's gotta be specific to change this. Remember how this morning, I made three different uh, switches for those three different cat to, no, it was a on off switches, how I had to make three functions for each unique one and have attributes for each on off switch. So here we have just a switch now that increases the count of something. So this is just adding to something and then we display that number here, okay? But we still want to apply the same principle. Each switch has to have its own respective uh, properties that we are switching, okay? We don't wanna switch to work for all three, so we have to create some unique functionality. Let's let's do that for now, and then we'll work on how to improve our functionality, okay? So we, we start with something a little more complex with training wheels, and then we, we ease up and then show you how to make it, um, how to reuse functionalities, okay? So, but, this is the way we want to do it now. All right, we have our likes assignment. Uh, we have button clicker. And what else is a core assignment that we have to do? Um, that's, that's it for today's core assignment. So you guys should have completed all of Fridays by now if you haven't done it profile page or uh, that one yet. So make sure you do it. Um, and so tomorrow we're going to go over uh, input and change a little more. We're going to be going over the um, timeout feature maybe a little bit. Yeah, you can incorporate that. And here is also an assignment that you can use to practice the test. Okay, so use this as a practice test before I give you my own. This is a lot like the test. So it has some a couple functionality features. Look at this one here. When you click on a city, it should display an alert. So a JavaScript alert should pop up like we see here. And it should say when you click loading weather report. So pretty simple, right? That one is just an alert. Alert is probably the easiest one. So you wanna be able to know how to make an alert. And then below there's some functionality. 
when you click the I accept on the cookies section, the whole area should disappear. So what I said about that earlier was you want to use a document query selector to select the whole div. So when you click the button, the whole div disappears. And what else? You want to be able to switch here the temperature. When you click Celsius to switch uh, Celsius to Fahrenheit. So it goes from 24 to 75, 18 to 65. That's switching from Celsius to Fahrenheit. So that's using the input and change. So you're going to want to look at this, uh, read and understand this area here before you work on this dojo weather assignment. Okay. Again, I'll be emphasizing these tomorrow. These are, this one is a practice assignment, but it's a good practice assignment for the test. All right, so tomorrow, again, we are gonna be reviewing for the belt exam all day, the morning lecture, afternoon lecture. We're gonna be doing assignments related to the exam. We're gonna be doing code reviews. So I suggest that for the code review, you choose something that's gonna be challenging enough that when I give you a critique, you're gonna be able to take that critique and apply it to the yellow belt. So don't just choose an assignment that you, you know, did, it was, you know, easy peasy. You don't want to get graded too harsh. No, get something that I can critique you on so that you can get that, uh, you know, benefit for the yellow belt exam. Okay. So that's it for today, guys. Uh, I'll be hanging out for the next hour, checking in on the groups that have not completed the, the eight ball and uh, just being here for help for any assignments if you guys need me. Okay. So I'll also be here for another hour or so. Thank you, Lucky. We have Lucky as well. And uh, awesome. Well, thank you, guys. Do you have any questions about what we're doing so far? Anything related to today's lecture, presentation, eight ball? Anything in general? I know it's a pretty general question. Okay. Uh, you know, if you don't know what to ask yet, I'll be dropping in the rooms. You'll be asking me then, I'm sure. So feel free. And uh, let's stop the recording now. Thank you, guys.